that are used by all types of health and fitness professionals. So this DVD is designed for professionals. While the stretches can be done at home by lay people, I wouldn't recommend it because there's a greater risk of injury. And that would apply to the novice professional as well. So a personal trainer uh, or physical therapist who's never done these runs a greater risk of overstretching out the scar tissue, tearing through adhesions without that being the goal, um, or even rupturing incisions. So you've got to be really careful. Better to practice with a colleague or a friend or family member at first until you have the technique down. We're going to start off with upper extremity stretches. Um, one of the additional benefits is that it also helps to increase the flow of lymphatic fluid. So anyone who's at risk for any type of upper extremity lymphedema, whether it be from radiation or lymph node removal, um, they can do these stretches to help encourage the flow of lymphatic fluid. Now while we won't go through this in this video, prior to the stretches, I would recommend for those people that they begin either on the floor or in an upright position if they can't get down on the floor, doing pelvic tilts and crunch type exercises to essentially dissipate the lymphatic fluid in the torso, allowing room for it to flow down from the upper extremities. Otherwise, they may end up with pooling of lymphatic fluid in their midsection. We're going to go through a number of different types of stretching techniques, starting with active isolated, which is the safest. And it's similar to any other type of exercise set in which we do 10 to 12 repetitions. And we only hold each stretch for two or three seconds, unlike a traditional stretch where we would hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. The, the benefit is that you, the client, is in control because you're going to go as far as you can. And then I just increase that stretch just a tiny bit more, really reducing the risk of injury or additional pain. We'll also cover PNF stretching, which is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. It's typically been used in working with professional athletes, but it has great benefits with cancer patients or anybody else. It's just not something I would start up with right out of surgery. And I would definitely make sure the person who's doing it is well versed in that technique before doing it on any, any patient or client. And then lastly will be just passive stretching where the client does essentially nothing and the trainer or therapist is fully in charge of the stretch. But with that comes a greater risk of injury if the person who's facilitating the stretch does not know the limitations that the client is working within. So if, if I overstretch you not knowing that it's causing you pain, I can cause damage. And therefore it's really important that we converse throughout the entire process. So you're telling me if I can stretch you a little more or if I'm over doing it before you get to the point where your eyes are rolling back in your head and you're cringing from pain. All right, so we're going to begin having you face forward and I'm going to have you raise your arms out to the side, palms facing down. Now if somebody can't raise their arms up high, then they can do whatever they're comfortable with. And in fact, sometimes when their arms are here or higher, people will have impingement in the shoulder joints, which can immediately cause pain. So I would just recommend they lower their arms a little more. Now in active isolated, you are going to push your arms back toward me, and then I'll grab at the wrist joint and pull back just a little bit further. And right here, we are stretching out the chest. Now I'm just going to hold it for two or three seconds and then release. And yes, breathing, of course, is critical here. Just gentle breathing in and out. Push back as far as you can. And pull back a little bit further. And in this particular type of stretch, we're going to repeat this 10 times with each repetition yielding a little bit greater stretch. So I'm not going to have you go through this 10 times, but just wanted to show you what the active, active isolated stretching is. Now that particular stretch is perfect for somebody who has round shoulder syndrome, upper cross syndrome, and that's where the shoulders are rounded forward, usually because of tightness in the chest wall and weakness in the upper back. And that may be from radiation, it could be from a mastectomy. It could also be from day-to-day -day stuff like driving a car or working at a computer. Any of that that encourages that poor posture. So not only do people have to stand up or sit up nice and tall, but they have to actively stretch out through that musculature. So that was an active isolated stretch. Now I'm going to show you a PNF stretch in the same way. So your arms will be out. Now what you're going to do, Laura, is you're going to actually push forward, activating your pectoral muscles as I give you resistance. Now exhale as you push forward or pull forward for three, two, one. Then you relax and I just take you back a little bit further. Now you contract your pecs and this is an active stretch where you're contracting the muscles and then we pull back again. Now you contract one more time and I'm giving you that resistance and then we pull back and I just hold it there. 
and just relax. Great stretching technique. That is one that I would save for someone who's a little further out from surgery. Same thing, I need to be talking back and forth with you. Is this too much? Is this not enough? But this is a contract, relaxed type of stretch. So you're actually engaging those muscles and then completely relaxing them. And we do that three times. And then on the last time, just holding that stretch. And then lastly, passive stretching is where I, as the trainer, will very gently take your arms back and say, Laura, do you feel that stretch yet? Okay, and I'm just gently pulling back. Do you feel that yet? Okay, how's that? Perfect. So that's the point where I'm going to hold that stretch, tell you to drop your shoulders and just take some nice deep breaths. And in this particular stretch, unlike the others, I'm going to hold this for 15 to 30 seconds, allowing those muscles to just relax. Does that feel okay? Yeah. All right. Okay, good. Now that's the one that I would exude the most caution with, however, because I've been doing this for 18 years, but somebody who doesn't know what they're doing might come and crank your arms back and create all kinds of problems for you unknowingly. So that's where practice and just patience comes in to the equation and deciding which type of stretching to do. So that being said, I've shown how to do that same stretch with active isolated, PNF, and passive stretching. I'm not going to do that with each of the next stretches, but know that you can take each of them and apply those principles to every single one. Okay. All right. So we just did the number one chest stretch. This is another version where I'll have you place your hands on the back of your head. Now immediately, that movement alone for somebody who's very tight in the chest area, particularly post-op, that may be enough for most people. So they may not be able to or even need to do any more than that. But what I'll have you do is gently push your elbows back toward me and I'll just very lightly pull on them and hold it for two seconds and relax. Now how's that feel for you? Okay, and I'm supporting your back with my knee so you're sitting up nice and tall. I'm also going to encourage you to do a kegel where you're pulling in all those internal muscles, the ones that you would use to stop urine mid-flow. And let's do that one more time. Push back. Now, if we were doing this as a client-patient uh, session, I would be doing this 10 times. But for the purpose of moving things along, we'll just do three repetitions. And then go ahead and relax. So you had the first chest stretch and then the second one, both of which are opening up the chest wall. And in essence, just the fact that you're sitting up nice and tall, you're contracting those scapular stabilizers, the muscles that support and hold down your shoulder blades. And that's the other part of the equation, is not only stretching the chest, but strengthening posteriorly. All right, next one, I'm going to have you raise your arms up kind of like a V for victory. And this is getting more into the axillary area. So go ahead and push back. Now, for somebody who has had an axillary node dissection with breast cancer or a sentinel node biopsy, go ahead and relax. Now, you should push back as far as you can. This is excellent for opening up that, the, not only the lymphatic pathways, but also stretching through some of that scar tissue. One more time. Good. How's that feel? Good. Okay. Relax. Now, if you had had an incision right here for mastectomy, and you also had one here for the axillary node dissection, it's going to be increasingly difficult for you to raise this arm up because of the scar tissue. So the act of raising your arm in and of itself may be all the stretch you need. Um, but as I said, you're in control with the act of isolated, so we're just giving you a little bit more, a little bit more each time, with the ultimate goal being that we correct the postural deviation and that you don't have any pain as a result of that imbalance anymore. All right, so we had down, hands behind your head, and up. Now I'm going to have you stretch uh, your shoulder. And what I want you to do is reach this arm across your body. Now there's a lot of contact here between us. So um, go ahead and relax for a second as I explain this. As a professional, I'm very aware of the boundaries between my client and myself. And this is not for everybody. So you can also instruct your clients on how to do these stretches on their own. Not everybody wants to be touched. And particularly a woman who's just undergone breast cancer surgery, uh, I hate to say it, but if you're a male trainer, there may be some issues there with body contact. So, And I'm not saying that it wouldn't be the same principle with a female, but sometimes that definitely falls into play. So use your discretion. Ask your client if they're okay with you touching them. Um, and in some states, it's not even allowed. 
legally in the state of California, a personal trainer is not allowed to stretch out their clients. So make sure you check with the laws in your particular state, um, as well as the facility you work in, and just you know do do whatever is within those limitations. All right. So again, I'm supporting you with my leg, and I also I have my hand back here on the opposing shoulder as you reach your arm across your body. I'm just very gently going to bring that arm to your chest. Okay, so you go as far as you can, then I press in a little, then we relax. Then you come in as far as you can. I push just a little bit. And one more time, reach as far as you can. This is a very subtle stretch. A lot of people don't even feel it, but the stretch comes across the back of the shoulder. So for somebody who has had latissimus reconstruction, where they've taken the lat muscle of the back to recreate the breast, there can be a lot of scar tissue build up back here. And as you try and reach that arm across the front of your body, you're going to feel that limitation. So this will be a particularly advantageous stretch for that person. And of course, I would do that on both sides. Now we're going to do a tricep stretch, the tricep being the back of your arm, but at the same time, once again, we are stretching through this axillary area. Somebody who is very bound down by scar tissue or adhesions may be limited to what they're able to do. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. First of all, if they don't have any real limitations, I would have them bend their arm behind their head. I'm going to put my hand on the opposing shoulder, and then you're going to bring your arm back as far as you can, and then I'll just push you back a little bit further and hold that there. Do you feel that stretch? Yeah. And then we would relax. You go back as far as you can. Okay, and the goal here is to stretch the tricep, but as I mentioned, if there's scar tissue here, that will stretch as well. Now, let's say the person can't even get their arm back there. Then we can work through the plane of motion to increase that range of motion. So the plane of motion being abduction or abduction, I'm going to have you raise your arm up as high as you can. So if this is as far as you can go, then I'm going to go up just a little further. And then we go all the way back down to your side. All right, so palm facing forward, you go up as high as you can. And then I take you up a little bit further. Okay, and we repeat that 10 times. Now, ultimately, whether it takes a week or three months, ultimately our goal is going to be to have you all the way up at 180 degrees. And until that point where you are, we're going to continue to do this stretch. Once you have full range of motion, then this stretch becomes obsolete, other than checking in periodically to make sure that you're not regressing. If you are, then we go back to doing this stretch. Now, let's say you have limitations in flexion, which is going forward. I get you in the, the right the proper path for the pattern of movement, and in this case, the palm is facing the body, and you're going straight forward and upward, and let's show a limited pattern of movement right here. You're gonna go up as high as you can, so maybe that's it. Then I'm gonna take you up just a little bit higher, and then you come all the way back down. And we repeat that, you go up as high as you can, and we're doing this very gingerly, especially somebody who's just out of surgery is gonna be very weary about not only being touched, but about the pain that may be elicited through the pattern of movement. Now, same thing, once you are up to 180 degrees, which of course I would not be doing, you would be doing that on your own, then we're done with this stretch for that particular amount of time. In less two months from now, we check back up and you've lost some range of motion. Then we'll incorporate that one back in. Okay. Now lastly, I'm going to show extension, and that would be the arm moving back and upward. Very typical with someone who's had a mastectomy or radiation in this area, because this is bound so tight, as you try and reach your arm backward, it doesn't give. It doesn't want to allow for that movement. So what I would have you do is, of course, looking forward, palm facing your body, I'm going to have you raise your arm up and backward, not elevating your shoulder, and then I'll take you up just a little bit further and then you go back down by your side. So you bring it up as high as you can. I push you up just a little further and I'm always asking you, how does this feel? Is it comfortable? And with all of these active isolated stretches, we're doing them 10 times. All right, so those are three out of five of our patterns of movement. And we'll talk about external and internal rotation when I have you down on the floor. But in the sitting position, those three work really well. Okay, next we are gonna do the next stretches. And these are they're part of the lymphatic drainage exercises. Anytime somebody's at risk for lymphedema, whether they are um, a breast cancer patient, whether they've had uh, thoracic lymph nodes removed or irradiated, cervical lymph nodes, they're all at risk for upper extremity, 
opening up the lymphatic pathways in the neck is critical. Um, you want to make sure that they don't have a neck injury or any other you know, cervical disc problems. If so, you don't want to put your hands on them. They can do the stretches themselves. So definitely make sure you know that in their health history. First thing I'm going to have you do is tuck your chin to your chest as far as you can. And then all I'm doing is putting the weight of my hand on the top of your head to create a stretch. Do you feel that? Yeah. Okay, now in this particular one, I like to just hold it with the neck stretches, although this is technically an active isolated stretch. I just want to hold it for 15 seconds, encourage you to breathe deeply, and just totally relax. And everybody loves these stretches. In fact, it's a great way to keep your clients coming back because it's very hands-on and they appreciate that. It feels really good. And then the benefits, of course, are amazing. So then sit up nice and tall, okay? Now the next thing you're gonna do is lateral flexion in which you're gonna bring this ear to this shoulder. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just depress this shoulder a little bit, creating that cross stretch and simply place my hand on your ear and encourage you to sit up tall, pull your belly button in, and breathe. Does that feel good? Yeah. And of course now the stretch is through here. Okay, so for the professionals that are watching this, that particular stretch is going through the SCM muscle predominantly, but now I'm gonna focus it on the uh, scalenes by having you simply do this, the same stretch you just did, so bring it over to the side, but now you're gonna turn your chin up to the ceiling. Do you feel that a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the stretch moves to the front simply by having you tilt your chin up. Okay, and I'm just kind of assisting a little bit. You could do this on your mm -hmm. own. All right, and then lastly, we're gonna turn your chin to your armpit. Now we're getting into the levators and upper traps. I'm also depressing the shoulder, but my hand placement now is on the back of your head instead. Do you feel the difference in that stretch? And as I said, you are initiating all of these. So in essence, they are active isolated, but we're holding them as we would any passive stretch for 15 to 30 seconds, whatever time allows. Now that equation is gonna be contingent on where the patient or the client is. If you're beginning to work with somebody who's sedentary or fresh out of surgery, the last thing you're worried about is strength training or cardio. The first thing we need to do is get their range of motion and their postural deviations corrected so that they can move through a normal pattern of movement before we place any weight or load on that particular limb. So therefore, the hour session that I have with you initially may be made up more of stretching and range of motion exercises initially and then gradually converting into cardio and weight training. So that's going to depend really where the person is and also whether you're a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a massage therapist, you know, whatever modalities you're using and what your personal goal is or what insurance is paying you to work with the patient for. One of the things I see very often, um, particularly following an abdominal tram, within the first few weeks of surgery, we see forward flexion at the hips because of all the scar tissue and you know potentially adhesions which don't usually occur that quickly but you'll see people walking like this so when you're working with clients at that that stage of the game it's really important that they can just stand erect first of all before you would ever have them doing any type of crunch type exercise because that will only exacerbate that forward flexion but the next stage is that after, that after that gives way to weakness, we start to see an extreme lordotic curve in their lower back. And that's from weakness in the abs and overcompensation in the lower back and the erector muscles, as well as all the other core stabilizers. So our goal is not only to strengthen the abs, but also to stretch out the lower back. And that helps to alleviate a lot of the pain associated.